Oh, hi. Hello, uh, hello, Dan. Yeah. Um, you. Know, I. I thought I would. Thought I would come in as a. You were mentioning a lot. Is that you were looking for his? You're hoping for opinion of a, of a historian. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. I, I kind of. I find sort of conversations like that to be a little difficult because um, inevitably what ends up happening is people will sort of shoot in the dark until there's like some period of history that you can't possibly have all of the knowledge on unless you're yeah. a historian. And so like eventually it's kind of like, uh, yeah, like, okay, I don't know all that much about like the, the minutia of the Spanish Civil War or the like policy making decisions of the weimar republic i just know yeah, like the gen like i'm not a historian i know a little bit about it but you see well, what i mean uh, like it's 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 a fucking uh, weird thing i think you can do that to like i think that can happen in anything it generally makes for a boring conversation yeah yeah uh, to, um to just explain to uh chat is that uh like even as for it's myself that I, I do have accredited like background doing history and all of that yeah uh, it doesn't mean that historians are an expert on world everything right right. For my, like explain to explain my my expertise like uh, my expertise is like early medieval europe and 1800s united states it doesn't mean i'm an expert on weimar germany's social policies and other the stuff but i could definitely could explain but i'm familiar with them but i'm not yeah. an expert that's fine so, so yeah do you have like some questions that you want uh clarified that you think that you would want to know well i mean it was my understanding that like the nationalist bent of of like uh, of of like hitler's rise to power began long before hitler himself even came into power like as i mean yeah. obviously world war one is like undeniably like it was a conflict of nations it was a conflict all about yeah, nationalism like ever on every single side i think that was it's absurd to even claim otherwise but like once you get into like weimar like there was a lot of there was a there was a pretty strong undercurrent in germany of like an attempt to reclaim like a greater time for germany um yep. and that in my opinion that like that obsession with nationalism led to um and as i understand it led to you know on a political level to um multiple different nationalist up like movements that that rose to to um various levels of success within germany and then also um you know sort of as things as the pressures of the of the you know 1900s like moving forward grew on of course this became more vicious and as the nationalism wasn't just about nationalism like in like the most tamest form it became about well who's to blame for our country not being great yeah um, it's it's definitely a lot of the thought of nationalism from what I've read and at least the people who I've specifically studied that probably started around during, uh, like, people would call it the Dreyfus Affair. Uh-huh. Are, are you, were you familiar yeah, with that? Yeah, I'm familiar with the Dreyfus Affair, yeah. Yeah. My, to explain to the chat, basically, a Dreyfus Affair was a, uh, uh, there was around early 1890s there was a guy i think it was uh, dreyfus he was a captain in the french army and there were they thought that uh he was a spy for the german government and to which then much of it was because people thought that he was jewish for the reason of that yeah and but i don't think nationalism specifically is all about jewish people i think it's no, a it lot isn't. about like the style, as, as you explained, like nationalism has been very much like an important issue even through World War One, and yeah. a lot of it was like done through much of bitterness. Yeah, very like a lot of people were bitter. Like specifically, why you have Italians became like the first fascist state is because they did not get a uh, uh, this certain amount of land that they thought was fair to their to their uh, like the war, and a lot of it was done through they called stab in the back like they were stabbed in the back even though we died so many on the corboretto and the river osanzo yeah they felt like they they felt like they had been mistreated by the other powers yeah. Yeah. and like that, of, that sort yeah. of national pride again like the, the 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 without even getting into the details of how like things as i understand it like well before world war ii um like the italian government had already begun um like it's bent towards authoritarianism and was like jailing political dissidents like on the yeah. regular is that not accurate is that not true i felt like i feel like that is an accurate yeah. thing 
I think he was somewhat accurate. I'm more familiar with. So like, Gramsci after... was like a communist uh, theorist, right? And Gramsci was like pr imprisoned well before World War II, if I'm yeah, not mistaken, yeah, right? Definitely. Like much of it was just a lot of it bitterness. Specific. If you're talking about specifically the Italians, they had a bad rut of like really bad military commanders during their part of the war. And then they had the really bitter battle of a Corporetto, which basically did like a total encirclement of their army that killed a lot of people. Yeah. And much of it was, I would much to their theories of afterwards is that they, a lot of what the amount of blood they spilt on in the Alpine mountains, all that was justified for them to get a certain piece of land that they think they should have gotten from Austria and People like demigods such as Mussolini took advantage of that. Yeah, he originally was a socialist, but I, to me, I think the political ideology is like a circle. He just went from like socialism to the right version of it, which is fascism. Yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, especially at that time, like, like there was, uh, there was a lot of new, new developing ideologies. And also there were a lot of opportunists, people who were willing to wear whatever badge at the time that they believed. And it was, you know, their ideologies and what they advocated for and what they used to gain power and where they directed it, in my opinion, is much more interesting than whatever they called themselves at the time, you know, because again, like the, you get the, you get into the position, you get into the conversation of like, oh, well, the Nazis were national socialists. Ooh, well, it's like, okay, but that yeah. doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter what you called them. It matters what they did. And what they did was they centralized power. They were very, very supportive of like strong corporate um, power um and they to, purged, to a certain they point. Purged, yeah to their, yeah exactly as long as it ultimately came to yeah. heal to the, the 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 purposes of the state at the end of the day but then um you know and they were also um like they purged their leftist faction like they literally purged the the the, the leftist in their movement like yeah. the, the whatever leftist you could even call like people who are willing to go along with the nazis to that point so yeah and then oh yeah and then of course like their their social policies were to target anyone who wasn't like this specific uh vision of the of the perfect uh german and it was you know of course then, yeah, everybody, then it, we get into was, the stuff that everybody knows a lot of it was like based off of like rose colored glasses and their views on on heroism and the what is to be a man yeah the this man is perfect he has family and all of that and to and the most of the people as i believe the guy you talked to explained was that he thought that much of it was i believe like i think he had like a warped view of explaining like his view that it was justified because it of this happened yeah but but we also know that the same effect of those who were part of the fascism cause were just, I would say, is like middle class business owners that were so afraid of them st of uh, taking their business and all of that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, much, much of it, which is like the same way you have today of like moderate Republicans, a lot of them business owners or at least highly makes enough money that they fear that. If like a socialist takes over, they will lose their job, they lose everything, they will get killed. A lot, a lot of this was prop of, prop of part of the propaganda to, yeah. to uh, influence them at least, turn them to that end. And much of what they asked for, such as like they said women's rights, I believe what he mentioned, yeah, like their four women's rights, they they were for it, and then they just take it away after they yeah, get in power. Exactly. I mean, and, in the same, it's the same thing, right? Like that the Trumpers do these days, where they they have the like lat Latinos and and African Americans for Trump, and they put them at the front of the of the of the rally yeah. so that nobody can criticize them for it, while at the same time advocating for um. And I'm sure a hundred years from now, people are going to talk about how fucking garbage like Donald Trump was, and there's going to be right wingers who go, well, yeah, but Donald Trump, there's this iconic photo of Donald Trump holding up an LGBT flag. Yeah. Actually, secretly, he wasn't actually that bad. He actually really liked them. Yeah. Despite the fact that policy-wise, he literally banned trans people from the military. They tried to ban, they tried to make it, they passed out a memo that helped helped discriminate against trans people by s teaching you how to spot trans people. It's just... Definitely. Uh, it, it's yeah. much, even if people... There are like a lot of them were tokenism, do tokenism like Ben Shapiro, yeah, Dave Rubin, and, and uh, Jesse Lee Pearson, much of using their um, own, and I mean, even especially Candace Owens, 
even though much of them are for like grifters to for the point and to say, oh, like, I'm Jewish, yeah. or at least this minority, and I'm for this cause. Either way, if when a fascist takes power, they're still going to be thrown into prisons anyway. Yeah. And they don't uh, even it's so realize that. Yeah. And I feel though, like, like the one area that I could have done a lot better in this uh, like conversation was not like not getting distracted with the the Mosley thing that which was funny it was funny but i wanted to point out how like the attempt to de to define a um the attempt to define like the ideal american is in and of itself like a very questionable goal because you have to ask well what's the goal what happens if you aren't that what happens if you aren't the ideal american just by chance yeah. and what it's... is the and, and how you define an ideal american is really like super questionable and like we started to push into that with like the oh well there needs to be english and then i'm like well why couldn't spanish be the national language why couldn't you know well no i can't be it's got to be english and it's like well yeah and then there was the mention of like what if you're not strong well does that mean that disabled people don't get to be your ideal american it's pretty fucked you start getting into the eugenics territory really really fast it's not like these worldviews that are hyper hierarchical and super authoritarian always end up falling back on that because at the end of the day they view humans as instruments to be used towards the power of the state yeah. And I and, think that's and, really problem and, problematic. And much of it, a lot of it is based on following the leader. It's it's very, I think it's just like a simple uh, illogical ideology. Like there's a quote from, like I believe Goebbels who says like, when they were like winning the amount of people they got, they thought they were winning too fast because then a lot of people were going to get on to what they really want. It, it's I it's a false false. Uh, cause of like system like i'm part of this group i can i have a community that cares about me yeah but really it's it turns into more of like a backstabbing cult in yeah terms. oh absolutely i mean again there's these problems in this uh there one of the inherent problems in like fascist movements and in fact the fascist worldview is this idea of like the constant need for action the action for action's sake it's not it's yeah. not action even necessarily for uh like they're, they're they will invent a greater cause and and as we saw yeah, with sure. with donald trump is like like they'll invent it it'll be oh there's a we saw, I mean, first there was the Muslim ban thing where they were all freaking out about Muslims for a while. And then all of a sudden there was the caravans, the hordes of people that just never, never ended yep. up happening. Yep. And that then there was the steel, so you gotta, you gotta stop the steel. And then there's like, and then there's now there's like, oh, the coup. It's just every single, they make it up. It's just, there's a new crisis every five seconds because yep. you have to be, it has to be desperate. You can't have time to sit yep. and rest. You have to be scared and ready to fight. It's a never ending, uh, constant um treadmill of of fear that has to be stoked up and definitely. if it doesn't then it starts to fall apart i, I definitely explained the same thing last time i talked to you about like much of them keep yeah. break, trying to make up conspiracies because they think it would create coalitions yeah for their causes yeah and a lot of most of the time it, it just doesn't work in the long term short term it like gets people attention with their short like attention spans and get something interesting, but really in the long term, it it doesn't at all. And more, it actually helps people who are affected by it, like LGBT rights, were like same thing a conspiracy issue back during the six during the seventies and eighties. Yeah. But at least it helped get them to a spotlight. To eventually now they have rights, and we're working on trans rights now. Yeah, which is definitely something that we look into but it's just a lot of it is as like a lot of people says like facts it's based off of like their feeling of community yeah and their fear being... yeah i mean that's the thing right like i mean part of the reason why like we spend you know or i spend so much time like talking about um you know uh like like ta talking about how these like these movements capitalize on pain and suffering um is because like it it's a it's a it is a functional uh manipulation tactic if you have a strong person who whether it's true or not they tell you i can make you feel safe you yeah. will belong here whether they actually mean that or not then 
people who are hurting and aren't feeling safe, they might trust that person. And then, but that person will weaponize that to get them to do things. It's a very, it, it's like when you break it down, it really is a simple, it is a simple, uh, equation of of just but but it's just layers of different types of manipulation in ultimately obfuscating the truth which is that like strong men are just humans um yeah, they might be charismatic definitely. they might they might have some small advantage but they're not flawless they're yeah. they can't save you from everything and they won't and yeah so yeah def like definitely much of this language is like one of Hitler's favorite things was like, like let's say hardness, like they're as hard as um, I forgot the, the certain steel, but it was a Pacific steel. And eventually a lot of people like, um, I don't want to get to keep going to other people. Jordan, Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Specifically he he's studied his whole thing for most of his career was studying how to convince people of ideas. And that's how he eventually learned how he was able to create this, cult of personality through just because he he's she learned how to look at like people like hitler who used much of these languages that would describe people as a hero yeah. like i want to be great as a person as a person and like defining like the traits of why this is like emotionally important yeah it's and, it's and, convincing people that yeah. uh that they're the the main character of the story as long as you keep following my worldview and giving me money and stuff like that. And in reality, there is, um, like, like it's a diluted worldview that where, you know, that, that just leads to very toxic things. And I remember this again, like I've been in my thoughts about this kind of stuff a lot lately, you know, and that's why I want to do that religious, like that deconstructing my spirituality video. I was mentioning earlier, that's something I really want to do because I think a lot of these things, a lot of these, elements are present in our politics right now which i you know i don't think is all that like surprising given how strong evangelicalism was in in the, the the establishment of the american right um but yeah there's just a lot of that manipulation there's a lot of like sort of manipulatively selling you as the you're like a main character but at the same time you're like the main character who's doing the mission for sky dad and they sub out who sky dad is you know sometimes it's like you're literally doing it for god sometimes you're doing it for donald trump um but or maybe a combination of the two but there's always that you're like a a hero on a journey to to save the to do good for the greater power and it's yeah. i don't know it's very weird yeah. but yeah um, to get to the point like why like there's there's a the one thing i do think as to like you you know Vosh pretty well right yeah yeah of course like he mentioned uh one trait of like fascism is that a lot of them were very like self-critical and they are very insecure yeah, yeah, like, yeah of course any of these figures as we know like um Mussolini Hitler even Mosley are very were always has been insecure like yeah. one thing to know about Mosley is that he is like was like a mama's boy for like most of until his mom died and yeah and a lot of and same thing for hitler and his uh gaffes of him farting all the time <laughs> and uh the and the, just the amount of anxiety he had sometimes to a lot of his it's very it just it's always like that it seems like with these uh kind of ideologies of very unconfident people yeah. to then start to uh like fake their way into saying like no i need to become the, the perfect man yeah male male uh insecurity is like the backbone of most of these movements um and it does it is fueled by that again that need like a very human need for a purpose but that's weaponized Definitely. weaponized by strong men you know who say well your purpose will be to die for me and some yeah, people accept that or die for country or die that's for country yeah uh, which you know usually means die for me um whoever's in charge of the country but the male insecurity thing it like that really is a big deal it really is like a huge thing and it's like i think a lot of it is because there's just these these cycles that have never been 
put to rest like cycles of patriarchy where simultaneously men see themselves as the rightful heirs of everything because they're taught taught they're supposed to be the leader of a country they're supposed to be the leader of their family they're supposed to be the spiritual leader of the household these are all i mean this is so unbelievably um like 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 oh my god there there's like it's so prevalent in christianity especially and it comes of course at the cost of women being like locked in obscurity and not actually being able to self-realize at all but it does also um torture men you know because they are so desperate for this purpose that they're told they're supposed to have and there's not you're never allowed to talk about it you're never allowed to talk about like um in these spaces the like shared us feelings of futility of of uncertainty um and this is something that i think at some point i would really like to watch the uh the good mythical morning talk because they they talk about this believe it or not like they actually talk just about this about how like um the the like uncertainty um was almost like it felt like it was undermining um one of like uh Rhett when he was talking about it, he's like you know this like sense of uncertainty it fe- it was undermining my sense of who I was that the um that this it was undermining my sense of masculinity like I was supposed to be the rock on which my family was built and I wasn't sure about these things it's very fucked and yeah, like I think it's interesting that like um that like I don't know some of the experiences of being trans there's a lot of overlaps in this of like being trans of being queer is is acknowledging your mutual vulnerability and your mutual uncertainty and becoming stronger together and not running from it and it's so strange that these ideologies that fixate on strength so much um often don't ever like they're actually just mostly comprised of deeply scared people so yeah they don't give you an answer it just it's very much like based off their fear of um, insecurity. Yeah. Like yeah. as an example of a real life, like group, group like Baptist group, like the Proud Boys, their whole thing was like venerate the wa- the housewife as yeah. one of their main tenets. It, and it's a lot of it to the secure of them in, of them saying like oh like of them fearing that they'll never have like a loved one or someone they will deeply care about or have like a family <sighs> it, it's it, yeah. it, it's very it's always concerning with that yeah and i i remember a lot of that in the church i grew up in like the veneration of the housewife and the veneration of woman's position and ultimately it is a it's like a consolation prize for the fact that you're ultimately going to become a domestic slave because uh oh god i could talk about i will talk about this in the video like i'm i'm becoming more and more convinced i need to do this spiritual deconstruction video because there's so much i need to i want to talk about i really want to talk about how fucking toxic um the gender relations are in like far-right ideologies are so bad they're so bad and like i could tell you about how like the the, like veneration quote-unquote veneration of the housewife is just it's so twisted and it leads to genuine mental torture for a lot of both men and women um in my own family like as a quick example in my own family like there was this constant struggle between uh my own parent my mom and my stepdad as to who was supposed to be the leader of my house when my mom was clearly the most organized and most like capable of leading the house but she could not openly take that position or be allowed to take that position because it would be an invalidation of the religious ideology of the household. It was very, very fucked. Very fucked. Like I grew up as a Catholic. Yeah. I mean, I had, there was some of that into when I did stuff like uh, confirmation and uh, are you familiar with confirmation is like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, what I, I, I think probably that was like my most difficult time as I almost like they almost kicked me out. Yeah. Cause I think for reasons, because I, I was like, who's the person that uh, inspires you most? And I said, Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Brave. <laughs> uh, and uh, like my dad, like my dad was like, like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. It, it's, but it also supposed to say Jesus. Yeah. Eventually later we had to do like these, um, community service and talking about your saint that you idealize and a lot of them were concerningly like talking to me he's like why you idealize like joan of arc and i 
and to me like much of my reasons was not because like she was a god like a godly person much of it was that she was a great tactician and a leader of people that i that i think during a time where men were like it was probably the worst time for women yeah yeah and, it really was and and much and much she of got that burned was, alive yeah all because she didn't want to wear like women's clothes yeah it's pretty bad i mean i mean if she that's definitely like all of that was a part of it but i feel sorry for like people like those who came from like evangelical families or even you said you mentioned you're you're protestant right yeah uh i grew up in a uh evangelical christian cult called calvary chapel um which was after. it's protestant and uh and uh and highly evangelical they were obsessed with um with recruitment and witnessing yeah. and and all that i know yeah. who they are there's yeah. one like right right down my street right yeah now. they're everywhere yeah. they've got one everywhere yeah it's wild yeah. actually people don't even I notice they most people have one in their town and haven't really noticed it yeah it was like the funniest part about that i mean the church itself like the pacific pasture went to that uh party that everyone got covid in october oh my god and he was part of that same group and got covid and was and just trying to hit back to where it was yeah it, it's 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 a big church and very concerning a lot of people go to it even here but like luckily i i'm coming from like albuquerque as explaining yeah luckily luckily we have like people like uh, deb holland who i'm gladly she just got the position as a uh, Secretary of Interior. Yeah. And I'm, and, but we, we, but we, I'm more afraid of like other places who are not, who have to deal with that same divination that makes people feel terrible about themselves. Yeah. Me too. Like, yeah. Definitely. Well, and, Dan, um, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to probably play some video games with chat now, but thank you so much for coming on. I, I always love talking with you. Awesome. Um, yeah. And, uh, I hope, that uh what is the, the guy the corporate boy Cor uh, corporatist boy corporatist boy that he learned some a couple of things yeah i think uh, i think he will we'll we'll see yeah. i mean that fashy shit is pretty fucking toxic but you know i felt like that was my main goal was pointing out like hey these are some kind of toxic elements maybe there's something else for you out there that's more healthy yeah he could, i mean he's 15 he could grow, he eventually grow out of it yeah hopefully yeah you can hope. Uh, it seems like he's got a. Uh, he's looking for the truth somewhere, you know, and that's I, usually a good sign. Yeah, I think when I was like fifteen, I was like a, one of those um, enlightened centrists. Yeah. I mean, we all have those times and remember those cringy moments. Yeah. So, but um, good luck with the video game and uh, thanks for the love chat and uh, hope to speak to you too sometime when you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. We'll probably set up something for either this week or next. Um, I'm just trying to work out yeah. my schedule. I've been kind of yeah. harebrained about it, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that debate you're gonna have on Friday. Though. Me too. I think that'll be very interesting. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading this week for it. So I have a I have a big week ahead in front of me, but we'll see. I'm sure I can get it working. Who are you debating again? Just, just um, mind. ask yourself and Avi on Friday, and then I'm also having a yeah. conversation with Jangles on Wednesday. Wednesday. I don't know if it'll be a debate, but it's like a debate slash conversation. I, I heard Excuse that uh, ask yourself is kind of toxic sometimes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think he's had some um, some spicy interactions, but he's always been he's so far been very kind to me. So I'm sure it'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just saying I haven't watched any debates with yeah. them, but I do I do hope that uh, goes well, and uh, hope to see you next time, and I hope chat had a great time listening to us talk about more fascism yeah i think they did so thank you so much and i'll talk to you soon, talk to you soon. Bye. that was super nice yeah